Hey everybody, uh, sorry I had to read something YouTube put up there. I hope you guys are doing great. It is a warm July morning. I can't believe August is almost here, but it's true. And you can see my dahlias back there, my Savannah garden bed. And I just got done pinching them so that way they'll branch and be more full. And so pretty excited about seeing those guys develop. Um, we're getting ready to plant some annual vines on our fence back there. It is a little late to do it, but because of our moving and everything, we're going to try anyway and see if we can get some color by the end of the season. But uh, anyway, just wanted to get on here. We're going to show some flowers. You know, we've been doing this every week. So if you're new to this video series I've been doing. It's, I've been trying to highlight flowers that if you are a gardener, if you are a flower farmer, or maybe you're a florist with, a, with a, an amazing gardener or a garden you want to start and you're curious, what can I plant for this time of year? Well, that's what we've been talking about. And if you like this content, please feel free to subscribe and like it on YouTube because um, we're, we want to do more of this. So this is what you're looking for. Uh, I will say that the variety of blooms. I mean, we've been doing this now. I think this is the fifth or sixth, maybe the sixth week and trying to highlight something different. And the variety is gigantic. And so I, I'm always amazed. Um, before we get to that, I want to show you one of the flowers that you don't think of for this time of year, but I ordered this back in the spring last year. I think it was in May. Um, we did an amazing interview with Liz from Shriners Iris Garden. And one of the blog posts we created back then, and you can go to theflowerpodcast.com and see the post, was a whole series on reblooming bearded iris. So bearded iris is one of those flowers that's a great cut stem in the spring. But I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so great. Why can't are there varieties that bloom again? And so a lot of times in the fall, if you live somewhere where you um, where you can plant and have a long enough season, they rebloom for you. So I just, I got my box today. I ordered in the spring. This is the time of year where they typically ship. And I ordered, I'm not even sure, let's see here. I ordered one, like seven, six or seven varieties. Uh, seven varieties. One I think got subbed, but seven varieties that all rebloom. And then they also sent a bunch of bonus varieties. Um, and it's going to be hard for you guys to see these, but this is how they come. Uh, they come in a box like this, and they have a great little info panel. They didn't pay me to say any of this. I just was excited to try uh, this. But there's several bonus ones, and they come in, and you can kind of see they're a little bit uh dry you can see where the foliage is a little bit brown i'm not worried about that at all what i'm looking for is this root and the root is really firm really healthy looking you can see it even has some new roots that's trying to push out and so i'm going to plant these now i don't think they'll probably get enough momentum to bloom this fall but next year they'll bloom in the spring and the fall now they did give me some bonus ones like i mentioned like this one here is called butt darling which is a beautiful two-tone i don't know if you can see it but uh i don't know if this is a reblooming one or not but we're going to find out either way we're going to enjoy the bonuses and we're going to enjoy the reblooming ones and in fact i was going to try to show you one of these i mean some of these plants are so well they're all healthy but, um, oh, here's one. Ugh. This one is really amazing. So this one is called I Pink I Can. And this was the sub for Magical Encounter. But look at this flower. It's this peachy pink color. Anyway, these are bearded iris. We're going to plant these now. I'm not sure if I'll put them in the ground. I may put these in the pots right now because I actually have uh, a spot for these I, I really excited but it's not quite ready yet so we're gonna do that pot them up let them get started and go from there so that's from Shriners Iris Garden and again if you want to see that episode go back and look for it because Liz is amazing she is the second generation um, of and there's a third generation on the way at Shriners Gardens so 
Uh, also wanted to share on Instagram Monday night, we are going to go live with Christine Albright from Santa Cruz Dahlias, and she's the author of these two books. And we're excited because we're gonna see some seedlings at her place. So one of the flowers that I, um, I, I keep getting excited about, and this is, I know if you've never grown sunflowers, um, you know, you might think of this traditional guy right here, you know, the typical sunflower that everyone thinks of. And I believe this one looks like a pro cut orange. It, it's, they call it orange. It's not orange. It's really more of a yellow color. Uh, but it's a rich yellow, which is the color that's so popular. But I wanted to show you, this was a sample that was given to me from a grower here in Nashville. Uh, her place is called Pickin' Daisy, or Pickin' Pansies. And look at all the varieties of sunflowers. Green centered, brown center, all these different chocolate ones. The white, they call those white, but they're very cream. There's a dark centered one and a light centered one. And that lighter brown, almost kind of, uh, I don't know, caramel color. But all of these amazing sunflowers. So if you're a flower farmer and you've not tried these, I really recommend doing that. I, I'll say this, that when it comes to growing sunflowers, I really recommend trying to be seasonal with them. Um, for example, I really like these green centers in the spring. I think the green kind of goes with everything and it's bright and cheerful. I know that the brown centers go really great starting this time of the year, actually early summer all the way into the fall. And I will say that they're even still excuse me, popular year round, but just with the color palettes and weddings and things. Now here, this is one of the plum or pink varieties. Uh, another great one going into the fall. So we've got different chocolate ones. Here's another one. This one's shedding. I've had these for a few days, so forget. But look at the color. The colors are really, really beautiful. So sunflowers, um, there's so many different varieties now. Uh, you really need to look at some of these different varieties and see about adding them to what you're growing. And if you're, uh, you know, if you have a, just a garden and you want to plant a few, you know, you can plant a few every week and then succession plant them. So you starting, you know, what about two months after you plant them, you can have sunflowers almost all summer long and it doesn't have to be lots of them. It can just be a few. All right, another one of my favorites um, for this time of year is tuberose. Now, I wish you could smell these because they're really amazing. I did um, a post on threads about single versus double tuberose. This is the single tuberose. Let me see if I can pull one out here. They are very fragrant. Here we go. They are very fragrant. And here, I got two stems in my hand. And they are very popular in wedding work. Number one, because of their fragrance. Number two, they're white. They're a nice line flower. But if you haven't grown tuberose, I'd really recommend it. Now, often, like we're in 7A, I think here, um, often you need to dig them up and just store them, which might be a little bit of a pain or you can mulch them heavy. I know people who have mulched them under plastic or like frost cloth uh, and then leaves on top, they've overwintered. It really depends on where you're located. This is not the hardiest of flowers as far as coldness goes. So therefore, if you can dig, kind of like with dahlias, you're gonna get a much better uh, crop. Now I will say it'll be later. If you leave them in the ground, they will bloom earlier for you. I also want to say that they are, um, uh, because of the way they grow, digging them, the other benefit of digging them is, is a lot of times you can help eliminate any kind of weed pressure and things that would compete with them. But there's a double tuberose out there, and you think, oh, wow, double, double's better, right? And I, actually, I think the double could be better, but often when you cut them, uh, they you have to really kind of cut them open. They don't really... Uh, once they're cut, a lot of times they don't open. And so I've seen them cut kind of tight, like much tighter than this. And 
just turn brown. And it's so sad because I know somebody put a lot of work into them. The singles you can cut at this stage, you do want to be careful because when you start seeing flowers like this that are kind of pointed, they have little pointy petals, those flowers are past their peak and they're not nearly as pretty. You really want to kind of cut them when they start opening. Now you do want to have a few flowers down here. Like you can see on this stem, there were a few flowers. I picked one off. Uh, but they will continue to open and develop. But tuberose, this is a single tuberose, very fragrant. Very, very fragrant. Not overpowering, but when you have a whole bucket of them, it is really strong. But by themselves, they're not bad. They're really nice. And I think this would be great in any kind of wedding work, bridal work, uh, or just to have in your everyday work. I just think they're fun. Uh, and another thing is, is if you are a flower farmer and you do bouquets, uh, people always stick their nose in bouquets. I know we've talked about it here so many times. And having that little touch of fragrance is a real, real um, benefit. Um, wanted to show another uh, update for you real quick. Let me move this so I don't make a mess on that. Um, about a month ago, if you go back and look at some of our earlier videos that we've been doing like this, we planted some mum cuttings. We had an interview uh, with one of the, the breeders from, from Allison at Sagenta, and she had sent me a bunch of mum cuttings to trial because there's it's such a hot trend right now. And so these should have been in the ground probably about at least a week or two ago because their roots are long and beefy. But this guy is ready to go in the ground. I'm going to plant it. And then I'm going to probably pinch this guy like one, two, three, four, maybe right about there. Kind of cut it in half and let it branch out and be full. But these guys are ready to go on the ground. And we're going to get that done hopefully this weekend so we can them going. They are, they are really doing well. We have two trays of these. Uh, I think it's roughly about 170 plants that we're going to try. There are eight varieties and stay tuned because we're going to show more of this uh, later as they continue to bloom. Now, celosia we've talked about a couple times, but I really, this celosia I had to talk about today because when it comes to coxcomb celosia or the comb celosia, uh, this um, is, in my opinion, one of, of the best varieties. There are a lot of varieties that have more of a, like a fishtail, fantail, uh, sort of flatter head. There are other varieties that have a little more distortion in it. But when it comes to this sort of brain solution, uh, this variety of this series is really one of the best. This is a chief. And so there's a whole chief series. And uh, I went and I looked because I know there's more than a couple varieties. And if you go to like Johnny Seed, they have, I think, three color varieties you can buy straight. And then they have a mix. And then I went to Geo Seed and they have all six, six or seven varieties, I think. I think it's six. And then they also have a mix. Now, I will tell you, if I were growing this and I had um, uh, a, a big enough area, I probably, so these are some of the colors, I, I would not um, buy the mix. And the reason is, because out of the six or seven colors, I think six colors, three of them are kind of a shade of red. So I think there's carmine, fire, and red. So there's these three colors. One is a little more hot pink, one is a little more deep burgundy kind of red, and one is just red. Um, I believe this is red. And they're all great, but if you get the mix, you're gonna feel like your field is full of red. And then they have percent. And then, I believe this is persimmon, I think. Well, actually, no, persimmon's a little bit lighter. So there's an or I think there's an orange and a persimmon. And these, now, the other thing I want to show you, these are laterals. When you have, when you grow celosia, there's the main kind of single 
stem that grows in the center, which usually gets huge. It usually gets, well, not huge, huge, but it gets really good size. And when I work with local farmers, I usually tell them to put those in five stem bunches. They're so big, if you put any more than that, it, the heads end up getting broken because when you go to bunch them, uh, there's just too much pressure on the top flowers. So I usually recommend to put them in fives. But these are laterals. After you cut out that main stem, a lot of side shoots will come out, or they've probably have already started by the time you cut the stem. And if you leave them alone, they will go ahead and develop into these flowers. Now, when you get a lateral, so just to kind of give you some scale, here's a pen, and you can kind of see this, the stem is, is not very big, thickness-wise. The flower is not super big. Um, I was trying to see if I have something to compare it to. Well, here's the tuberose I just had. And you can see, it's not a really big flower. But it's a great flower for a florist to work with. So the laterals are totally usable and are great stems. But I would probably put anywhere from seven, eight to 10 stems in a bunch because it will give a higher perceived value. And then probably could sell it for maybe the same price as you get your five stem bunches that will take up the same amount of space because the head size are so big on those. So anyway, so these are the Chief Series. Really like them. Um, they're very consistent, and uh, one other thing I do want to mention real quick here, if, uh, look at this stem, I found this one in one of the bunches. That's one stem. All these little tiny sheets, isn't that cool? I think that's pretty neat. Um, one of the things I would say is pick one of the reds. Pick, if, if, if orange is an option, I would pick orange if Persimmon is an option. Always pick persimmon because it's that peachier kind of tone. It's not a champagne peach. It's just more of like an apricot, like a lighter orange. Um, and I'd pick a red. Or the gold, I would probably pick, I, I don't know. Like, I would probably do 40% orange, persimmon, 40% some shade of red, and 20% gold. Gold sometimes tends to show a little more bruising. It's not always quite as clean and pristine as this, especially later in the summer. But uh, gold is a great color, but, but sales-wise, the other colors are shades definitely sell, outsell this, um, even though it's beautiful. So that's my little take on that. And again, if you're looking for more varieties of Chief, GOC does have that. Um, Johnny's has has like probably three of the more popular ones in their mix But uh, once again, I just want to say I'd stay away from the mix because you're gonna feel like you got all red Which you don't but um, all right, so I wanted to show Agastache. So Agastache is also kind of known as anise hyssop um, And the anise part comes from the fact that it kind of smells like licorice. So this is Agastache and it comes in a purple and a white. Now, I will say that I prefer to cut this. Um, someone brought this in, but I prefer to cut uh, anise or agastache um, more colored up. Like this is really kind of faded. Um, I feel like um, they just waited a little too long. And it could have been as we've had a lot of rain lately and it just kind of missed the peak. But again, this is a great, upright foliage and it has the smell of licorice so if you like the smell of licorice or if you want something interesting in your bouquets again for fragrance this is a great flower um, i will say that it comes in this lavender color and it also comes in a white color the white you want to definitely cut on the early side not you know because you don't want it to get past peak because the white tends to kind of look more brown just because that's the way it shows up um, but the purple or lavender is really pretty. And there are a lot of varieties now of this, of the purples and blue kind of colors. And I haven't seen one I haven't liked yet. So if you want to try it, it's, but I will say, I will say, if you grow this, maybe grow it in an area that could be kind of permanent because it sometimes reseeds aggressively, which is a great thing if you're trying to, uh, grow it year after year. All right, so there you go. That is Agastache or Anise Hyssop. And I also want to take a second. If you're a flower farmer and you're interested in, or florist, if you're a florist um, or a home gardener, it doesn't really matter. One of the things that's 
uh, available right now are these peonies from Alaska. And they are insane. These came to me on Tuesday. I got them Tuesday. And they have blown open. Fabulous, beautiful, and incredibly fragrant. And so these are from the Alaska Peony Cooperative. But look. I mean, this is probably a Sarah Barn. This was sort of a mixed bouquet, so some of these varieties I may not know, but the Sarah, I mean, it is huge, huge, and very fragrant. And I, if you're looking for peonies, whether it's for a wedding, for you just to enjoy, maybe you have a farm stand and you want to bring something in, look, that is Red Charm. And the thing I love about their peonies is they usually... Oh, it depends on the variety, but they open all the way down and around. I mean, see how this just keeps going, and it's almost, it's bigger than a softball. And uh, we've got butterflies and everything coming here because we have these beautiful fresh flowers here. So, uh, again, these are some wonderful peonies from the Alaska Peony Cooperative. So, check them out if you haven't heard of them. Um, okay, so another summer flower that has kind of, it's a little confusing. Uh, when I, let's say when I was growing up, uh, we called this flower Montbrecia. And then they changed the name to Crocosmia. So depending, I, I think now m the majority of people call this Crocosmia. Now this Crocosmia has uh, had a few days on it. So you can see where some of the lower blooms here have sort of fallen off. But it just keeps blooming. And that's the thing I love about Montbrecia. Sorry, Crocosmia. And I don't know what variety this is, but there's several. There's yellows or some that are more oranges. There's also one called Lucifer, which is a darker red than this. This is a very like on fire orangey red. Uh, this is a bulb that you can buy. And it kind of looks like the foliage kind of looks like a gladiola. Uh, and it just comes up and it's beautiful in the landscape. It's beautiful when it just sort of, I don't know, kind of creates like this red wave of flowers. So this is Crocosmia and this is something I would definitely grow because this time of year it loves it. It loves it hot and it loves full sun and it's definitely worth doing. Also, if you don't cut it all, a lot of times these flowers, I don't think I have a good example of it, So a lot of times these buds, once they get pollinated, will create seed heads. And a lot of times people like to use these as texture because they almost create like this pea size uh, fruit that is, is great for texture. And you can use it dry to fresh. All right, so what else do we have here? I've got two more things and both of them are definitely favorites of mine. So this is Caryopteris. I'm not sure which one this is. Uh, might, oh, might be Blue Knight. So Caryopteris is kind of a woody, perennial, shrub-like flower. Uh, it doesn't get super tall. Usually you can prune it back in the winter, but it's fragrant. It has this kind of cool fragrance to it. I don't really know. Um, did I have a hummingbird there for a second? Coming to our Crocosmia. Um, it is, it's just really beautiful. I love it because it's got this sort of soft stem, very light blue flowers. It kind of feels like cat mint, but it's definitely woodier. Um, I feel like it doesn't sh drop or shed blooms nearly as much. But Caryopteris now, you can get it in pink. Uh, I think there's a white, but I think the pink and blue and different shades of blue are really my more favorite colors, especially for the summertime because blue is just a cooling flower and white or the pink looks great in bridal work too. So all of these things are great. Uh, one last thing, and this flower is so cool, is sedum. Now, a lot of people may grow sedum in their gardens. A lot of people may see sedum and not realize it has three stages or opportunities for cutting. This is what I call the broccoli stage. And in the broccoli stage, it is, you just, it's green. And it is, you want to make sure you wait to cut because you start seeing green and the buds develop and you think, 
You know, when do I cut it? You want it to be full. You want it to not be kind of thin. So if I pull, well, I don't, this one is so full. Uh, yeah, all these were cut at the perfect stage. But you want these buds to be swollen enough where it gives you the broccoli feel, where it's all filled in. And so you can cut it in this stage, green, or you can cut it when it starts to bloom in pink. And then after it's done blooming, it kind of turns this bronzy, rusty brown color. And even then in the fall, it's a great cut for that tone. And a lot of times people will use it because it fits the color palette for fall. So this is sedum. It's great at three ways to cut. And uh, I don't know, hardly ever goes to waste. I will say that I think last week perhaps, I don't remember, but uh, bottom line is there is a pink version that has kind of pinky foliage. There's a purple version, which is really, it's kind of a plum color that has uh, these, like everything instead of green has kind of got this plummy tone to it. There's a red version that is also got dark foliage with red. I still think if I were gonna, if I had one to pick, I, it would be this one. I think this is, this might be Autumn Joy. Uh, some of the, there's some other series like Brilliant, which tend to be a flatter bloom, a little bit shorter stems, but uh, I like this because it has these rounded broccoli florets. There you go. So this is one of my favorite flowers for sure. So we've had fun covering a whole lot of different things today. And if um, you've just joined us, go back and watch because it's, there's so many flowers grown for this time of year. And I know I was talking with a farmer the other day and they were a little discouraged because they saw where a lot of their spring things or their zinnias things they planted earlier are started to wane and have started to kind of go down. And, you know, these are the kinds of flowers that were really great for evening out your production and giving you a variety of flowers to um, offer your customers because they haven't seen these all summer or spring like they have many of the other flowers. So anyway, thanks so much for joining. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and like button uh, if you found this helpful and go back and watch the other uh, our other lives that we've done over the past few weeks because we've tried to show lots of different blooms for cutting. If you're a home gardener and you want to cut flowers out of your garden, or the cicadas love. Or if you want to um, grow cut flowers on your farm. So check them out. Uh, you guys have a great weekend and look forward to seeing you in the garden next time.